Have you ever played uh, the game Whack-A-Mole? You know, that uh, little game where you got a kind of a mallet and these uh, moles just kind of pop up around there. Well, th that's what Joe Biden's America reminds me of. You know, you focus on one disaster or outrage and another one pops up. You know, with all that is going on, we have to remain vigilant and address all the dangerous policy initiatives and ideas that are being pushed by this administration. Now, I just uh, I mentioned this in passing, I think, last week. I just want to remind you. Now, some people are all excited because the polling shows that the Republicans may recapture the Congress in the midterm elections. That's still a long ways away, okay? Uh, I mean, we're talking about a year. The, the issue, though, is I think, I, think, I think the polling is correct. I think the policies they're pushing will continue to drive people away from them, just like happened back in 2009, 2010. But here's the problem. They will, knowing that, they will push as much garbage as they can to fundamentally change America. We have to be vigilant. We have to be involved. Now, one of these areas that we're seeing this happen, we've talked about it. Uh, I think it's back really in the forefront of at least parents with schools back in session. Uh, and there's no better time than to return to a discussion of the indoctrination that's taking place in our public school classrooms. I know we've got what's happening in Afghanistan. We've got what's happening at the southern border. We've got the uncontrolled spending. We've got the vaccine mandates. I mean, that's the outrage of the day. But we don't want to miss what's happening in the classrooms. You know, critical race theory, or CRT as it's called, uh, is it as pervasive as we're being told? And why is it a threat to our children and to our nation? And most importantly, what can you do about it? Well, joining me now to uh, talk more about this is the Attorney General of Ohio, Attorney General Dave Yost. He's been tracking what's in the classroom. And he knows this stuff, and he's been a part of fighting it in the state of Ohio. General Yost, welcome back to the program. It's good to be with you, Tony. Thank you for having me. Now, I know this is not a new issue to you. Uh, you were a part of about 20 AGs that wrote a letter to the president back in July uh, when guidance was coming down from the Department of Education. Uh, you have been on this topic. Tell us first, I think let's start with just what is critical race theory? You know, we people hear a lot about it, CRT, and there's sometimes just, just assumed people know what we're talking about. Let's define it. So it's a little bit hard to define it. And on the left, they're defending this by claiming, oh, well, it's not what you're saying we're, you know, doing. Um, and, and so I don't even like the term CRT, although it's shorthand for a sophisticated theory that has a lot of Marxist roots. And it looks at all relationships in society. It looks at history exclusively through a lens of race. It talks about all relationships in terms of power. And as Tim Keller has noted, uh, the problem with talking about everything in relationship with power is how do you prevent the person with power uh, from simply eliminating oppression by becoming the new oppressor. So I prefer to talk about the king consensus on the color of our skin. Right. So let's start with what you have uncovered in the classrooms in Ohio. Is this actually happening in the classrooms? So, of course, nobody's teaching graduate level theory uh, in K through 12. What they are doing is reshaping American history to teach that America is fundamentally a racist nation, that our kids, by virtue of the color of their skin, are either oppressors or victims simply because of their race. Uh, and that couldn't be farther from the King consensus. So is this... Um... I mean, is this a part of something bigger that is unfolding in our society today? What is the connection with this and say Black Lives Matter? 
Well, the idea that race is the most important thing uh, in America ignores our history. And it's an attempt to rewrite our history. Now, don't get me wrong here. Let's talk about the warts. Uh, we, slavery existed. Sure. The Tulsa massacre yeah. ha happened. Um, 3,000 black Americans were lynched during Gr Jim Crow. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is a recasting of American history that says America didn't set out these ideals that all of us are created equal, uh, that says we don't deserve any credit at all for eliminate, fighting a war to eliminate slavery, the, the long fight against racism, the repeal of Jim Crow, um, the legal protections for civil rights. All of those things are proud American history, uh, and they stem directly from our founding documents and traditional American history, um, which we have continued to aspire toward those goals. Yeah, I mean, there's no question about it. America got it wrong in, in several areas, but when you go back to the core, to the foundation and the principles, the ideals that birthed this nation, eventually we got it right. And we are continually, uh, you know, working, well, I, I actually think we're moving in the wrong direction right now. Uh, but if we go back to those founding principles, I think we can get back on track and begin moving America forward to be a force for good, not only here, but literally around the world. Absolutely. America was called by Lincoln, the last best hope of the world. And he meant by that the idea of freedom, of equality, of equal dignity for all human beings, whether we're wise or foolish, rich or poor. All of us deserve to be treated equally and with dignity before the law. So, General Yost, let me ask you this. What are you doing to, I'm going to call it, uh, the poisoning of the minds of our children. What are you doing to uh, prevent that in the classrooms of Ohio, especially the overreach from the federal government that's pushing this onto classrooms? Well, of course, we, uh, uh, I and my colleagues made it very clear that we were prepared to take the Biden administration uh, to court if they were going to use federal tax dollars to force this stuff to be taught uh, in, in American classrooms. Last week, I sent a legal opinion to the Ohio Board of Education uh, saying, OK, you want to train your employees? That's fine. But you can't do it in an unconstitutional way. And if you approach, for example, uh, implicit bias training by telling all white people that they're guilty of slavery, um, you are probably going to buy yourself a whole load of trouble. Parents are really concerned, you know, is this, I mean, we've seen this at uh, school board meetings, you know, the, the, I guess it's kind of the silver lining to the pandemic to, to some degree, parents started paying attention to what their kids were being taught and they began to see this. And as you said, it doesn't come with flashing uh, neon sign saying CRT, critical race theory, it is the elements of that that are interwoven into these various uh, course curriculum. And so parents have shown up to these school board meetings and they're speaking out. In some cases, they're having a lot of success. How do parents, based on what you have seen, how do parents find out what is going on in their child's classrooms? Well, I've heard stories anecdotally about children who have come home in tears uh, because they've been told that they're racists because they're white. Um, but the most frequent thing I'm hearing is um, mom and dad during the COVID epidemic uh, trading off, trying to keep the kids focused on remote learning. And they're starting to hear uh, coming over the screens what would have only been in the classroom. Uh, and so they're learning a lot this last year about what actually happens in the classroom for good and bad and not, not all bad, uh, of course. But I appreciate you know, what you said. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I really appreciated what you said about uh, school boards, because while some of this does 
uh, implicate legal uh, issues. And I and my colleagues uh, in attorneys general offices will be out there fighting those legal issues. There's an awful lot of this that's not particularly illegal, but it's not wise. And these decisions are made in a thousand local school boards. Um, and going to that school board and telling them what you think, or even more important, signing up to stand for a term of office, do your bit for the community to get on that school board and help govern it uh, is the most powerful thing you can do. Ultimately, this isn't going to be won or lost in the halls of Congress, although they may weigh in. This is really a battle in the, the local school boards uh, across America. Yeah, w without, uh, without question. And, and some of the challenges, uh, General Yost, that parents are having, and, and first, let me, let me just state this. We've got some really good teachers that are in our public school classrooms because I've, I've actually heard from them. I've talked to them and they're grateful that we're shining a light on this because they don't like it. It's coming down on them from, uh, you know, superiors. It's, uh, you know, those, you know, sometimes we don't know who those actually those people are that are setting this, but we've got a lot of dedicated men and women who are in our school system. So I don't want to paint everyone with a broad brush, but you do have on occasion, you have these uh, parents that encounter uh, districts, teachers, administrations that are refusing to give information to them. What legal rights do parents have to know what their children are being taught? Well, the education of your children is a fundamental right. Um, the actual remedies are going to be different from state to state. Uh, in Ohio, for example, we have a fairly strong public records law that would allow you to see the curriculum that the teacher is using or the school district is using. Um, that's a public record. You can demand it, and if they won't give it to you, they can sue. Uh, on the other hand, uh, most of us don't have a lawyer handy in our back pocket or the checkbook uh, to uh, force the issue. So uh, I appreciate the advocacy organizations that have uh, supported individual parents and, and their legal rights. And back to that basic of democracy, your local school board, be involved. Think about running. Yeah, it's, it's actually uh, not a difficult seat to, to run for for the local school board usually doesn't cost a whole lot just takes a little bit of uh, time and energy uh, to get involved in that uh, general dave yost always great to talk with you thanks so much for uh, joining us today and, and thanks for being a Thank part of shining a light of what's happening in america's classrooms